DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Wedding Chat with Jeremy Breck and not Dave Turnier. No, this is Glenn McKay from Australia. Good evening, guys. Take it away. Hey, thanks, John. Glenn, welcome. Uh, this is this is the Dave Turnier lookalike, so that's why we have him pulling <laughs> tonight. Um, if you've ever been to a... Yeah, you got to spike it up. If you've ever <laughs> been to, like, Mobile Beat or... Uh, well, I think we were all at Wedding MBA one time together. Um we always get mistaken uh, for each other, uh, especially Glenn and myself, which is is kind of funny because I don't have the Australian accent like he does, accent like he does. Um, but Glenn, if for for those of you who do not know who Glenn is, Glenn is a phenomenal master of ceremonies down there in Australia. Um, does a lot of weddings. That's a, that's a, like your biggest focus. Um, but you guys obviously branch out to uh, here and there throughout the industry. Um, I've known Glenn for, gosh, what has it been? Seven, seven years now? Probably about that. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, we met in a Marbeca workshop and we kind of grew stronger in our, in our relationship and our families have grown together, um, you know, throughout the years and it's just been awesome to get to know Glenn. So Glenn, why don't you tell people a little bit about yourself? Well, I, th I think you've pretty much covered it. So I have a, a, a little DJ business uh, down here in Australia and uh, we have a really cool team that we work with here. And I've, part of the reason we've been able to grow our business is because of knowing people like yourself, Jeremy, and and lots of other cool people through through the US, which is through my travels over there to, to conferences and workshops and all those sorts of things. Cool. And so why don't you, you explain a little bit to... Um, how you even heard about workshops and mobile beat and, um, you know, the, uh, oh gosh, who was it? The American DJ association had their seminar or their, their stuff going on in, in the fall, which would be our fall here. Um, how did you ever find out about that stuff? So I guess how it first started for me was way back, way back in the day before social media was DJ chat, the, the old, um, uh, online forum, I guess, and I don't even know if it still exists, but it's and just by, and, and I wasn't active on there other than watching and reading and learning. We'd only recently started our business at that point. So for me, it was just trying to get a hand, my hands on any sort of content educational, how can I be better? What can we do different? What's happening in other areas that we can implement here? And so I saw things, and, and I'd seen stuff about mobile beat for years and years, but you know, for us, it's a, you know, 13-hour flight across the Pacific and then a little hour or so flight from L.A. to Vegas. And, and the expense of that, like our first trip was uh, in the vicinity of $10,000 because we tacked on some touristy stuff and uh, went with my wife and we renewed our wedding vows and saw some shows and all that sort of stuff. So it was really cool, uh, which is actually, that's the, and I did some workshops. I did the Marbeck workshops then, and that's uh, where I met yourself and Dave and a few other people. And... I, I still always say to people, if you're to the Australians or anyone who's making that significant trip over, is take the time to do the workshop. If you do the workshop beforehand, you'll meet people 
So you're going into the conference actually knowing some faces other than, you know, what I would class as known people in the industry. So yeah. uh, like I remember at that first, um, that first mobile beep going, oh, my God, that's, that's, that's Bill Herman. Well, that's such and such, and I'm like, and now it's like, you know, these guys are all friends, and and yeah. you know, we catch up and hang out. So, um, going literally going into that coming, sorry, going to the mobile beat after the Marbeka, I was sending my wife with, I think I sent her with you and and Dave into one seminar, while I went to another one, so we could sort of divide and conquer. And they're like, she's like, oh, okay, who are these random people you're sending me with? But, you know. <laughs> she trusted it and it was all good and no one died. So it was, it was, it was a good time. Cool. Okay. So I, I want to go back to something that you had said. Uh, you said that, and granted there was some leisure, there was some, you know, some fun stuff that you did, but I mean, you make a $10,000 investment to make yourself better as a DJ, to invest in yourself, your company. Um, and now from what, from I, I know this because again, I've, I've met a lot of your guys. We've worked together um, and just seen each other in workshops and everything. But I mean, you're sending your guys to these workshops and that's a big investment as well. Um, I mean, the, the thing that just blows my mind is, you know, people are like, well, I don't want to buy a $300 pass to this show because that's expensive. You're, but you're spending a hundred times that amount. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous how much you guys are investing, but you see the outcome, you see the results that you're getting from these shows. Absolutely. And I, I think one of the things where, where that doubt comes from in, in sending your, your team to something like this is that oh, I don't want to train my competition, my future competition. And I think that's a really negative way to look at it. The more we have found that the more we've invested in our team, the more benefit our company has received from it. So we have a team of 19 at the moment and the more we train them, and, and we don't subcontract in people. All our all our people work exclusively for us. So they're they're employees. They're not. Um, I, I'm not sure what your terms are with tax rules and whatnot over there. But ours are all employees, not subcontractors. And the reason we do this is because we can train them, and we're not training competition. So the more we invest in them, the better they become. So uh, a lot of people. I'm not sure if a lot of you watching this met Ben while he was over there in Vegas earlier this year, but. I couldn't make it myself, so I sent Ben, who's sort of like uh, my right-hand guy, and he went over there, he did Mobile Beat, he did the PhDJ conference, and uh, sorry, PhDJ workshop, and was able to bring back all that information, and his, his profile has been able to go to another level in our industry here because of that, just yeah. because he now knows things, and he's, he's heavily involved in our business, he works full-time with us, so he's able to share with us what I wasn't able to, to gather while I was yeah. there. Yeah. No, and, and in the workshop capacity, absolutely. Like in MC workshops, when we had Mark and Rebecca come to Australia, I had as many of my team in there as I could get in because, you know, if you can do a workshop in your own country, it's a hell of a lot cheaper than flying halfway across the world to do it. <laughs> right. Well, and again, I think that's crazy that, you know, for you guys, you're thinking, man, yeah, that's a big investment, but it's what your company needs. Um, it's, and actually I'm kind of segueing into what our topic's going to be about tonight. Um, we were kind of talking a little bit beforehand and, and John messaged me, he's like, Hey, do you have, uh, do you have a, a co-host tonight? I'm like, uh, let me check. <laughs> so then I reached out to Glenn and then Glenn says, yeah, that sounds great. Um, and the next thing it's, what's the topic? And I'm like, that's a good <laughs> question. So I, you said, uh, you said goal setting or setting goals and things like that. And. I've been thinking this whole last week. I'm like, man, you know, it's, it's one of those things. Like if you don't set goals, you're never going to achieve what you didn't, what you didn't go after, what you didn't set your goal for. Um, and so the reason, the reason I'm, I'm segueing into that is because, you know, you look at the investment that you guys are making and you're doing it because you're, you've set a goal for yourself. And I'm curious on what your end goal is with this investment that you're making, this $10,000 investment, this, you know, $5,000 investment that you, you send your guys to these shows and things like that. What is the goal? Let's, let's talk about, let's talk about goal setting. Yeah. So I guess, um, I'm just reaching here for my, um, we have a, it's a, it's a two page document that we use in our company, which outlines what our goals are. So, um, you mentioned sort of end game. I don't know if I have an end game for us, the furthest we sort of shoot out is 10 years. And 
they're sort of some of your listeners, some of your listeners and watchers. I'm not sure what we call people. Uh, might have heard of like a, a BHAG or big hairy audacious goal, something like that. I'm not sure if that's the exact term, but it's basically what that is. And, and for us, we wanted to throw out there: what do we want our company to look like? 10 years from now and 10 years is an awful long time you can achieve a lot in 10 years right i can think of what we were doing 10 years ago and it was dramatically nothing like what we're doing now yeah. so we we went okay 10 years what do we want that to look like and this can be a whole bunch of different things this could be a financial goal so what maybe what your turnover is or what your profit is uh, it could be what the company looks like as in how many are in your team for those who want to go that sort of multi-talent route uh which is fine and you know do you want to be geographically just in your area do you want to expand outside of that um, what does your equipment look like what does your reputation look like in the industry so they're kind of um some of those are a little bit vague so they're not really good goals per se but they're more of a, a vision what does this where do we want to be in 10 years yeah. basically and yeah. we didn't, it wasn't just me who sat down and did that. We did that with our leadership team in here, which is, was four of us, so that we all had different input into that. Cool. And in, uh, again, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but your wife, Miranda, is actually um, a part of your team. She takes care of a lot of logistics and a lot of sales and, and things like that, um, which, you know, Sarah, obviously, you know, Sarah, um, my wife, she actually takes care of a lot of that admin paperwork stuff that I really don't have time for and don't want to do. So thank God that they are understanding. They know how we process as, as individuals and, uh, you know, we can always count on them because we never, we know that they're never going to, you know, try and screw us over. Um, so well, well, she, sorry to interrupt, but just to flip that back to what we were discussing earlier is is when if, if your partner, your wife, husband, whoever works in, in your business, that is such a, that, that's definitely a huge asset. I know my wife is probably the biggest asset that we have in our company. Yeah. And that's why uh, she's come to Vegas with me on multiple occasions because she needs to understand what I know and, and vice versa. And she, she looks at things through a different sort of lens than I do. Well, I mean, she's better at your business than you are, so. Yeah, if I... <laughs> If I died, our business would be just fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sarah, Sarah would sell the company. I was, yeah, I was like, <laughs> I don't want this. Um, so I actually I see that uh, Ron um, Cronebush. Sorry if I if I said that incorrectly. He's on the Facebook feed. Um, he said that he just came back from LBI. He was really excited for the training, the workshops that they took there. Um, I wanted to be at LDI. Gosh, Ron, I wish I could have been there with you. Um, LDI is a, is a beast in its own. There's so much to take in just on the floor of the show floor. Um, but the education is something I really wanted to hit up this year. And I just didn't get an opportunity because we ended up having one of our busy, busiest weeks this last week. Uh, we, I mean, just good planning, good timing of our schedule. Everything just really fell into place this last week. Um, and you know, we, we just, again, it takes coordination, it takes planning and it's hard to do that as one individual. So to have other people involved and in, in being able to, um, roll with the punches, uh, is just such a benefit. Um, I think, you know, as we're talking about spouses being involved in the business, um, the one thing that I've noticed that has really been a relief on, on, for me is now, Sarah, like I said, looking at this last week, if Sarah wasn't involved in the business, it would have been a little bit more difficult in the house because it would have been, gosh, all you do is work and, you know, you really need to spend time. You shouldn't take all this work on. Um, but now that she's involved in the business, it's, wow, that was a great week. And I'm glad we, you know, we did an awesome job um, with, uh, with, every, with everything. Um, can, you, can you hear me okay? Yeah, you're a bit quiet, but um, yeah, I think that's great. You, the fact that you did this it together. Well, hey, you good. Is that better? Is that good? Yeah, yeah, okay. that's good. All right, thanks, John. Um, so yeah, the fact that you guys did that together is it's an achievement you've done together, rather than you're up here doing this thing and she's over there doing this other thing, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, the and and that was again talking about goals. 
that was one of our goals was for her to eventually be a part of our business and to, to uh, take some of that weight off my shoulders. You know, we have other goals of trying to bring on more people and, you know, finding the right fit. And it's hard in our business because you have to have, you have to have multiple personalities almost. And the reason I say that is, oh oh gosh, this should be a Vicky, a Vicky thing. Um, (laughs) But like, I, I, I love to have a DJ who's very outgoing, you know, very exciting. Uh, you know, they, they can shoot with their, by the seat of their pants, but okay. Gosh, John, I okay. you know, now just tell me to turn it down. Is that, is that good? Man, he wants it up. He wants, it, I, I don't know. What to, I don't know what to do, John. Okay. Well, I'm going to try that. If that does not work, let me know. Um, but anyways, I'll just back up a little bit. Um, anyways, the, the, the reason I, I kind of bring that stuff up is no, no, I'm kind of lost. Um, help me out. What, what, what was I just talking about? Um, you're talking about the different goals in your business and, and, and the different personalities and different staff and things like that, that you're looking to bring on. Okay. Yeah. So, um, again, our, our goal is to, you know, get the right people in the right seats. Um, but it's like, okay, do I hire a DJ who can also be organized, but then you start battling personality because an organized person isn't the, I'm not afraid to be in front of people and public speak and, you know, get out there and be a, a DJ and an MC. Um, so it, it's trying to, it's trying to figure out how does our business plan look and writing that goal down. Um, you know, we, we always have a, a beginning of the year. Here's what our goals are going to be for this year. Um, we definitely achieved and, and reached a lot of our goals that we were going for this year. Um, sales wise, I mean, everything we we've just done a really good job, but you look back and it's like, oh shoot, we missed this goal. Um, we missed that goal. And and maybe it's because I, I didn't write it down and I didn't stick it on my mirror and said, every time I wake up, I'm going to look at that goal and say, how am I doing? Um, I, I think that's really important. And I think I, I, I think someone, I either read it in a book, <laughs> gosh, now people are like, what book was that? I don't know. Um, it was either in a book or it was in a workshop or a seminar. Um, but every goal you have, you should be writing it down. You should be looking at it every day and asking yourself, how am I doing and have other people hold you accountable to it? You know, not just asking yourself, how am I doing, but, you know, have them ask, you know, how are you doing today with that? Um, how about, uh, how about, you know, within your company? Um, the nice thing is you're multi-op Dave's not Dave's a Mac person. Um, but how how are, how do you guys keep each other accountable when it comes to goals within your company? Yeah, so one of the things that you mentioned there, I think, is and I, and and obviously, I'm not sure if you gave me the whole story or not, but you went from your your yearly goal to setting it here, and most likely the start of January, and then getting to December, and did we reach it? So for us, and then of course, having it written down, having it visible staying top of mind with it. We literally have a two-page document here, right? So I mentioned the 10-year, we have three-year, and then we have the one-year. And then the one-year gets broken down into three-month increments. Uh, It's said that you lose focus after about 16 weeks, so, or 15 weeks, I don't know. It's (laughs) three seconds for me. I already lost one. Yeah. (laughs) So so every quarter we have a check-in and we set goals per quarter. And so... How we set those goals is really just a breakdown of the larger goal. So if the goal is to have a turnover of $1 million, then we need to break that down into what do we need to achieve in the next three months to be 25% closer to hitting that goal. Right. And and then after those three months have passed, uh, it's how did we go on that? Do we need to reset it? Do we need to, did we get it? Okay, what's the next thing we need to do to get to that next that next quarter and the next quarter and the next quarter. So hopefully you don't get to November and go, whoops, I forgot about that one. Yeah. Um, and also keeping it visible. So this piece of paper is always on my desk. It's not on my wall yet because we're getting our house painted, but uh, <laughs> it's it's on the wall and it's it has, you know, we have 15 goals for this year and then I have uh, our leadership team has six um sort of very important tasks to do this quarter, which will lead us to hopefully having achieved all 15 goals by the end of this year before we do our our meeting in January to go through it all. So it's about exactly what you said, you know, who's keeping you accountable 
and keeping it visual, keeping it in front of you. You mentioned having it on the mirror in front of you. I think that's a great place for like that, that big picture goal, that, that big one of, you know, I want to be, I want to book a hundred events this year. Right. And that's, that's your goal. And, and you can, you could, if that's your goal, you could literally be ticking them off as they come in. Like, okay. I'm going to run to the bathroom now, book that in, tick it off down to 99. Right? So, and, and cause it's the, it's like a to-do list. Once you've done it and you, you get that big black mark and you cross it off, that's a, that's an achievement. And it feels good to have done that. Oftentimes it feels better to cross it off than it did to achieve the goal. So, yeah. 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 No, I, th- I think that's cool. Um, and I'm, I'm, I am watching the YouTube and the Facebook since Dave completely bailed on me tonight. Um, I am watching that tonight here. So what I would love to hear is, and Glenn, I'm going to have you do this as well. I would love to hear what, what goals people have set for this year that they've achieved or they're almost achieving, or maybe a goal that they're going after that they're struggling with. And maybe they do need somebody to hold them accountable and kind of keep pushing them forward. Yeah. Um, so those would be, those would be some things I would love to hear back. Um, fly Robin. Thank you for telling me that my sound is amazing. Um, so sorry, John, I'm, I'm, I'm going with him. Uh, I'm going with, with Robin here on how my sound is right now. Uh, but I would love to hear what people's goals are. Um, the goals that they've achieved, the goals that they're going after, maybe the goals that they're struggling with and just let us know, have you achieved it? Are you working on it or are you struggling with it? And, uh, you know, again, I mean, we, we want to see, Hey, maybe here's some things you could do for that or things that we can help out with that. So tell me, Glenn, um, what are, it can be personal, it can be business, it can be whatever. What are some of the goals that you guys, uh, that you guys are, are trying to go for that you achieved here in 2018? Yeah, absolutely. So I was just looking at that in the, in the, anticipation you might ask so for, for us this year has been all about uh, strengthening up our team it's it's been about creating um, better djs better mcs and a better culture uh, surrounding that so for us uh, we have a thing called a dj gym sesh which is um, i guess a way of having a dj meeting without it sounding like a boring meeting. Uh, there's no weights or aerobics involved. It's it's all the team coming around and it's usually at my place. It's usually involving food and drinks and a couple of DJ decks out and the guys are, are doing their thing and, and experimenting and having fun and stretching those DJ brains. Uh, so we had a goal of having nine of those throughout this year and we've, we've achieved that goal or we will have achieved that goal by the end of the year. The other one was three... Uh, team social days, which are just just uh, an informal thing. So we've we've had a we had a Taco Tuesday night the other night at a restaurant where we just go and we foot the bill for it all. Uh, the the Queen movie is coming out uh, here next month, so we're all going to see that. We actually get I think we're going to hit four or five of those this year, which is it's being deliberate to to have those days where we're building responsibility and care for the company one of the sayings that we have here is setting each other up for success so yeah. you know, if you're going to pack up the up lights pack the up lights up in a way that's going to make it easy for the guy in the warehouse who has to plug him in to charge him yeah you know, just tiny little things and you know and we've got this great understanding and, and seeing that come to fruition has been amazing because like these goals are there for a reason. We want to see certain behaviors and activities and seeing how, uh, for example, we had a pack up and our guys were around town and some were just dropping in to help people pack up and get it all done. And by the end of one of them, we had five of our team there packing up this event and we got out of there super quick and all just headed out by to eat afterwards. And there was no an anticipation of payment for that extra little bit of time work. They just wanted to help each other out, which was really cool. Cool. Do we, no, have we had anything come in or are we up to now you have to share? Yeah, I will. Um, I, I, I have a, a comment from James here. It says, as a DJ, you should never look at another work or DJ working with you as competition. That would be a DJ with an ego. Um, I completely agree with that. And I went to a, so this last week we did AV for uh, women's leader cast and they have a bunch of like very, well-known uh, public speakers that talk about leadership and women in leadership. And, and I almost felt bad being a guy um, because it was like, it just really seemed like women power, you know, but there were some really good presenters, but actually the thing I got the most, and it was one of my Facebook posts on my personal page 
Um, you, you saw my Facebook page? Yeah. Well, okay. yeah, it's maybe your first one in like three years, but <laughs> yeah. no, I never post on there. I'm but so hundred percent agree with it. And the comment, I think someone else commented underneath it and I was like, Oh yes, so much. Yeah. So the, and, and this is going off of what James wrote here. Um, it basically said, you know, leadership is not being the best. It's a lot or being there to allow people to be better or something like that. Um, or helping, helping people become better. That's what leadership is. And, uh, I'm just kind of rolling off of what James had wrote there. Cause I completely agree, especially if it's within your own company, imagine how good, how amazing your company could be if you had leaders that were achieving so much, but yet they were sharing so much and they were giving to other people. I mean, just like our, our structure in our business is, you know, there's different, there's different price levels per entertainer. And absolutely. If I can make my guys be the best that they possibly can be. I'm going to do that. I'm going to pay. You know, I just talked to one of my guys last night. I said, Hey, there's a Marbecca workshop coming up here in March. I want to send you to it. My treat I said, you did an awesome job for us this year. And I want to treat you to that. Um, I hope that my DJs become better than me because then I don't have to work so much. I don't have to do as much. Um, so James, I think that is, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Anybody else who has goals or, or things that you want to share, please post those on the Facebook page. Uh, the only thing I see on Facebook right now is Ron. Thank you for posting on there, Ron. Otherwise, it looks like there's some good, uh, some good discussion going on on the YouTube channel. Um, but my goals that, uh, you know, my, that I kind of set for myself at the beginning of the year is I wanted to become healthier. I wanted to, and I'm not saying I'm, I'm not healthy, but there's always that it's like, when you're a good DJ, you always want to be better. And I, I didn't, I didn't work out. I wasn't doing things. I just had a high metabolism and I've been fortunate for that, but that's not always going to be there for me. And so starting last spring, uh, my wife and I, we were in the gym three times a day or three, oh gosh, not three times a day. Three times a week. Yeah, we were really going after it. <laughs> but we hired a personal trainer and um, that was one of the, my, my favorite things. And I kind of fell off that wagon a little bit here just because again, our, our years has been so busy and I know that's not a great excuse, but you know, come November here, my goal, I'm going to get back into it. I'm going to get to where I was this summer and, uh, you know, hopefully even better than where I was this summer, but I just, I feel so much better. I'm more alert. I'm, um, you know, I don't have back issues like I I've had in the past just because I started taking care of myself. And one of the things that I think people struggle with is, um, you know, they, they say, well, you know, it's, it, I, I, I can't do it because my body just can't handle it. Your body can't handle it because you're not used to it. But I think if you start pushing yourself and allowing yourself to do some of those things, your body's going to adjust to it. And that's one of the things that I needed to do. So that was a huge goal for me. Um, for my business, again, it's a goal that I have not achieved yet. And it's because I've learned to what is it? Um, fire quickly, hire slowly or whatever, something like that. And, yeah. and I, I had to let go one of my, one of my guys, um, who was a full timer with us because it wasn't the right fit. It wasn't, he's not an organized individual. Um, and he completely understood it. He completely agreed, but I, my goal was to find a great fit for our warehouse and midweek setup and stuff like that. Um, and I just haven't found that yet. So that's a goal that I'm working on. And it's one of those things where I just have to be patient. It's going to fall into my lap. Um, and you know, I guess my other goal is the $1.6 billion multi-million lottery thing going on here tonight. Um, which I probably already missed. I, I didn't, I, didn't Did I, I, I heard on the news here about it and apparently one bloke won it. Just one oh, bloke. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Same Sorry. as my neighbor. I'll have to check. Well, we're like a day ahead of you here, so that maybe no one knows there yet. <laughs> you heard it here first at DJ. You heard it, you heard it down under. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's, you know, that's a, that's part of being a multi-op is, is you, you kiss a lot of frogs before you find your, your talented DJ, right? And or in this case, warehouse, midweek setup kind of person and, as you mentioned, they weren't a good fit for the role. You identified it. They were aware of it. And, and sometimes people's journey isn't 
with your company. Sometimes the best thing you can do for that person and and knowing you, Jeremy, Jeremy, <laughs> Jeremy, you are the sort of person who wants to help someone through their journey, whether that's through you or whether it is through letting them go, which is a tough thing to do. But, you know, when you see them have success in another field down the track, you'll be like, that makes you feel good yeah. because you did the right thing by them. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, the, the funny thing is like, he's still a DJ for us. He still does a great job as a DJ, you know, and, and he knows he's like, yeah, I, I could not pass up just being a, or I couldn't pass up the opportunity of the, the DJing in itself. He's like, it's great money. I love doing it. You know? And again, that is his fit. That is him. Um, the, the other thing is I have another one of our guys you know, he's looking for a full-time job and, you know, he kind of keeps hinting at it like, so, you know, any good job openings? And again, I know him as an individual. I, he's, he's been with us for over a year as, you know, kind of doing setup and tear down. And now he's going to be, he's training as a, as a DJ and MC. And I, I know him well enough where it's just like, I can't bring you on full-time because that's not who you are. I need this, this, and this, and that's not you. Um, one of the things I want to go to on the YouTube channel, Robert Ludwig, um, thank you so much for being vulnerable. Uh, I love what he posted here. He said to be a better public speaker, I joined Toastmasters international to improve my lack of skill. Now, one thing I want to point out, James, um, again, thank you for posting that, but you're not lacking skill. You're just going to improve your skill. You have the skill and now you're just honing in on it. So um, Toastmasters is still something that I've not joined and, you know, I have looked into it numerous times. I've looked into it for my guys and I know it's a great program. Uh, so if you're not familiar with Toastmasters, there is, um, there's an online group, which yeah. is mostly made of DJs, uh, yeah. but maybe exclusively of DJs. And I know a couple of guys from Australia are in it and they rave about it. So you know, I've, I've had some experience with Toastmasters here. I think I just didn't get in the right group uh, locally. But that online group, I think, is a great space to be in. Awesome, yeah. Um, I can believe well, and, and sorry, just to, just to touch on what you said, is, is that I'm sure he's a totally fine MC just looking to get better. Yeah, exactly. um, and and to, to put that, to share my own personal experience on that is just before I went to... Sorry? You sucked. Well, <laughs> just before I went and did my first Marbecker workshop, I had our company had won the best MCs in Queensland, which is our state. And I was I went to, into my, my first Marbecker workshop thinking I was pretty damn good. And that lasted for about 30 minutes until I had my first feedback. And, you know, then I started feeling horrible because I was like, oh, my God, I've ruined these people's weddings in the past. What am I going to do? And then... You know, I was able to be broken down a little bit until he built back up. So, you want you want to hear my <laughs> you want to hear my story of my first Marbeco workshop? Yeah, so, absolutely. So I'll get in there. You know, it's like Turnier, it's uh, Pugwane, and a whole bunch of others. You know, kind of in the area, Mike uh, Mike Anderson in Minneapolis, and they're like, "Hey, welcome everybody! All right, to get things started, we're going to go through." He goes through his PowerPoint. He goes, "All right, now you're going to write a welcome." <laughs> I, seriously i kid you not i'm like i don't know what that is <laughs> i never did welcomes before i took a marbeco workshop i didn't know what i was supposed to do what i was supposed to say i didn't know i was supposed to say hey everybody welcome tonight you know, <laughs> I didn't know that was supposed to happen so like that right there that's why i took bronze like three times so i'm like okay i i have to do a welcome i learned that in the first one now i know how to write a welcome uh, the third time, now I know how to actually do a welcome. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it, it was it was kind of funny because I, again, I don't know how many DJs in my market at that time or before Marbeco workshops. I don't know how many were actually doing welcomes before a wedding, before it started. So, yeah. Well, uh, in my market, there was zero DJs doing a welcome. My first ever welcome was in a Marbeco workshop. And yep. the, wor the worst thing was by the end of the two days, I felt pretty confident I could do a good welcome. And then I had a one day break and then I had my silver workshop, which is where I met yourself and Dave. And, and yeah. there's, there's Alan Marshall was in there. There's a whole, it's a very international group. Yeah. And I got up there and I was like, again, I don't think I was feeling confident. I think I was, I was not feeling um, bad. 
And then, because I was like, I've just done these welcomes, I'm going to be good. And uh, Brian Davis, who, who had done a workshop ages ago before, he's in my mar- he was in my market then, a competitor, gets up and does this welcome first off the bat. And I was like, oh, holy crap. <laughs> and this guy's in my market, he's my competition. And, uh, you know, six, seven years down the track, he now works as part of our team. So it's all good. But, yeah. oh, my God, it just... I just went from being okay to straight back the other drain. <laughs> and my, my tail's between my legs again. <laughs> um, so James had, had wrote on here again. It says, one of my goals is to get into, go to DJ Conclaves and other education. However, I don't know how to get that information. Um, John will have a lot of that, those details on the Disc Jockey News page, I believe. Um, a couple of them that my recommendations that I, I learn a lot from, if you're looking specifically for DJ Conclaves or specifically for DJ I don't know where you're out of, James. If you can actually give me that information, that's probably going to help a little bit as well. But the thing that, um, the thing, or the, the, the workshops and in, in conclaves that I've gone to, Midwest DJs Live this last year was a great, um, a great two, three day. I think it was a three day. That one was great. Mobile Beat does a great job. Um, DJ Expo. It's DJ Expo to me is very gear heavy. So if you're looking more for the gear style of, or the gear side of stuff, I think that one's a great one um, for that. They do have education as well. I've presented there. And I mean, we usually pack the room when it comes to, uh, you know, the, the lighting seminars that we do. But again, it's, it's more focused on, that's more focused on gear. Um, but there definitely is some education. If you do mitzvahs, I mean, Big Daddy and a bunch of other guys do an awesome job with mitzvah education. Um, what else, which other ones am I missing? Um, I think the fact that these are all within like a f- probably a four to six hour flight oh, blows yeah. my mind. These places don't have thousands yeah. of DJs cause I would be at every single one if they were not costing me, you know, a week of my time and, and thousands and thousands of dollars in flights. So, all right, cool. So James is in Ohio, um, Ohio. I mean, you're looking at Midwest DJs live, which is in Wisconsin. Um, just, just North of, um, Chicago. So you could technically fly into Chicago and you're basically right there. Um, there is, yeah. DJ Expo is just there on the East coast, you know, so that's not too far. I know a lot of guys that come from Ohio, um, over to there, you have, uh, arms DJ, which is in the summer. It's in June. Um, that's a great one as well. I have not been to that one yet, but I hear a lot of great comments that come from that show. It's a small, intimate show. You meet a lot of great professionals there. Um, let me see what else, you know, the disc jockey. The lineup, the lineup they get there is amazing. Yeah. And uh, I wish I could get to that. Oh yeah. And then, um, disc jockey news, obviously John does a great job of lining up this type of stuff, but you can only get so much from an online source. It's that getting together with other DJs and networking in those hallways that really is some amazing education. So if you do get an opportunity to hit those up, um, you know, find those. So like I said, I, I'm sure John can post something. And um, oh, there, James said he went to DJ Expo this year and it was awesome. So good. Yeah. So you're finding them. They're out there. They're out there. Yeah, I think another cool tool is is if you've got DJ friends in your in your local market that you socialize with is organize the time to catch up and talk DJing, talk actual mixing. And yeah. because being able to, to, to mix is a great talent and a skill. And if you can, if you can share that with someone who's, who's a competitor, but not, you know, you kind of plenty of work to go around sort of thing. If you're both in, in fairly successful businesses, then bounce off each other mm-hmm. and take advantage of that ability to physically get there in person together and set up your decks and, Chop and change back and forth. You know, and Glenn, he puts together the DJAA, um, which is in Australia. So if you can get a flight from Ohio to Australia to go to their... their yep. ag- Just connect in LA, straight across. Uh, it's on the Gold Coast uh, this next year. It'll be amazing. I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Glenn, again, I mean, those of you who do not know Glenn, Glenn does a lot of the, you know, kind of building up that DJ network down in Australia. He's done a great job with that for the last couple of years. I know there's a lot of, there's a lot of people involved in that. Um, and, you know, props to all of those who have, who have made the trip over to here, but now you're taking what you've seen and what you learned here and you've implemented it there in Australia. Um, because without that, again, I mean, it's, it's the leadership that you guys have that you're taking back and you're helping others 
because when you raise that bar, you're not just raising your bar, you're raising everybody's bar, which I mean, our market, you know, it, it's awesome when we get phone calls from people and, you know, we're like, okay, so do you have a budget? They're like, yeah, we've been looking around and kind of pricing things out. And, you know, we're budgeting right around three to, you know, three to $2,500. And it's like, thank you. You have a realistic budget, you know, and I'm in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. So people are like, well, we can't do that in our market. Don't give me that. Um, we have, we have worked hard in our market to work together. And when Glenn was saying, you know, get, get the guys in your market together and just go hang out and go, go talk and things like that. Um, we used to do that quite a bit. It kind of fell off the map for a little bit. Um, I did set something up this last spring with a bunch of the DJs in our market. And I think we had like, I think we had like nine or 10. I mean, even some of the retired DJs, they came and hung out with us. And it was just fun just to kind of, you know, talk shop, but yet also just get to know each other and, and talk family. Um, you know, some of the DJs are like, oh yeah, you know, I'm getting married or, um, I'm getting, you know, and everyone's like, you need a DJ, um, <laughs> you know, they're having kids and things like that. And it's just, it's, you know, building that camaraderie and understanding that you're not competition, even though you're going after the same clientele, if you're actually working together and now making realistic budgets for brides, we can all make a living off of this. And so many of the guys in our market now are like, yeah, this is my full-time job. I'm a DJ. Um, where a couple of years back, I mean, there was like, even I was working a full-time job and running a full-time DJ business. It was just unrealistic. Um, but we got this market into a great place where we've all benefited from it. And it's good to see, it's fun to see that growth and that progression in our, in our industry. And I think it's important to is how you approach that is is if you come at it with a really open mind and and, and being friendly and, and and sort of vulnerable to it to a degree, that's when it will grow. That's if you if everyone comes in closed minded, you end up just banging heads and and everyone's kind of a bit kind of cagey about things. But if you come in, just be like fully open because the reality is there's not going to be that much difference between the songs you play and the songs the other DJ plays. No. That's not where the thing, the, 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 the value comes with the personality and that, that talent. And, and that's not something people can copy. So I highly recommend, and you're going to, you're going to like, some people are going to reject it straight off the bat and you're going to upset people. They're going to say nasty things about you. But if you come at this with like just friendly and open and being that first one, I, I I'm sure it's a Gandhi saying, but, you know, be the change you want to see. And if you can instigate it, you'll be surprised how well it will pay off. Because as you mentioned, getting to know people, uh, we, we have so many talented entertainers in our market that I've gotten to know over the years. And I think you've probably met a couple as well uh, from my market. You probably met Brent um, Offerson, who is a singer, guitarist and DJ. So if I get an inquiry for that, is, you do not want me singing and playing guitar at your wedding, but Brent can crush that. So I can send them straight to him with the warmest referral they could possibly be given. Yeah. So they just want to book it. It doesn't, it becomes not about price. It becomes about he can deliver exactly what we want before we've even phoned him up. So for him, he's just booking it in and we get referrals back from him when he can't help someone. So it, it, it all comes around and it benefits you, but don't go at it from a way of, trying to get the benefits straight up, you know, it takes yeah. time, you know, and, and, and think about this and I've had to be vulnerable for over a year with this show. I've, for the last four years, I had to be vulnerable knowing that my competition's probably watching shop time videos that they're probably watching the, the information that I'm sharing on this show. But you know what? I really don't care because if it does help my entire industry, if it does help my entire market, um, it, it's worth it for me. And you know, you, you have to just, you have to allow those things to happen. Sometimes you have to be vulnerable. Um, I, I loved what you said. They're like, yeah, they play the same music. It's like, wait a second. You play uptown funk as well. Gosh, you're copying me. You're, you're just copying me all the time. Um, and it's not just your local market. Oh my God. You know, we, you know, we were hanging out just this or well, your summer and, uh, and there was some DJing going on, and I'm like, oh yeah, we play this song, play this song, play this song. And then there was some some weird country stuff. I went, well, and then you the Nutcracker song or whatever that was, the beard. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. Know. <laughs> but um, 
Yeah. So, okay. Uh, James, it looks like, it looks like John is getting you some information. Um, maybe. Yeah. But, uh, this, I mean, the, this, this kind of wraps up our show again. The, the thing I, the thing I really want to point out to people is yes, yeah, set yourself some goals. Um, be vulnerable to share your goals and your dreams because someone else might have that same aspiration and they might be able to help you become better at what you're looking to achieve. So, um, yeah. Any last, last second, uh, or last minute thoughts, Glenn? Yeah. Just, just that share, share the goals, even if it's just within your friendship group within the industry. So, um, for example, you and I have shared goals with each other and, mm -hmm. and it's that accountability that comes with that. It's like, you know, how are you going with that? And it doesn't have to be every day, but it's like, how are you going? It's keeping you on track. And it's like, yeah, that's right. I've got to work on that. And, um, and you get to then, uh, when you help the other person, you get to share in their success because you've helped in a little way, you've helped get them there. Nice. Um, so this show went so much better without Dave. Thank you for being on the show tonight, Glenn. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we miss you, Dave. We miss you. Uh, well, that's the night, everybody. I am Jeremy Breck with DJ Jer at Events and Lighting Design in Sioux Falls and DJ Jer Shop Time. Thanks for watching, Glenn. I'm Glenn from Australia, <laughs> from GM Event Group in Brisbane, Australia. Have a good night, everybody. See you next time.